Hi, I'm Lou Brutus from the world famous Hard Drive, and my guest is Lars from Metallica. It's That's good to see me. you. Nice to uh, be seen. Thank you for having me. So, um, any band has Spinal Tapian moments from time to time, and I think there was one involving two of your bandmates at the opening U.S. show this year in Baltimore, and it involved the monitors for Rob and Kirk. <laughs> News travels fast. Uh, Rob happened to walk in, and I and he told me about it. But if you would explain the story, well, uh, you may probably you know more about it than I do. Uh, he, you're up there. We're kind of doing our thing. So much of it relies on eye contact, mm -hmm. and you can kind of tell when one of your brothers is slightly off. And I could see something was bugging him. So after, excuse me, uh, song four, which is the first time we get a chance to run off, he was like doing the 100 yard dash in like two seconds right off got right in my way went back and as i was going back to change my shirt he stood there and started yelling at the monitor guy these are not my ears blah 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 so i guess uh kirk and rob had uh, somehow this is how professional we are 35 years in <laughs> uh they had somehow uh ended up with each other's ears imagine that in like your monitors, kirk yeah. hammond's earwax like <laughs> just, just play that one out anyway uh so it, it was a little funky for in the beginning, but uh, we will, uh, and we're aiming to turn, uh, to turn professional tonight here in Philadelphia. <laughs> uh, so that's been eluding us, but uh, it's just around the corner. Thanks for asking. I, I, I would have to think, and, and you would never want something like that to happen at any time. However, when you're on a stage that's <sighs> that big, where you're not like on stage at Webster Hall, where everybody's physically close together and you kind of sort of ride along with one another. It's got to be a little bit more acute on a stage that size. What would be some other things that you have to keep in mind on uh, a stage as big as you're doing for World Wired? <laughs> um, well, I, the one thing that we, I try to re remind myself is to do what we call the thousand yard stare, which is not just play to the 10 people that you can see in the front row, but really try to sort of get, you know, try to reach everybody and get out there in the back of the stadium and the top of, you know, the sections and everything and just try to sort of include everybody and make everybody feel that they're part of it. Um, but obviously, uh, when you're playing on a stage that size, it's really important to kind of always know, you know, where's James and it's just about eye contact and, you know, the hardest thing that we do actually is not play on the si uh, stage the size. It's playing uh, when we play indoors, we play in the round. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when we're in the round, I can't see any of the other three guys. And that's when you really have to sort of rely on your instincts and your intuition and so on. But um, the other night in Baltimore, it was great to be back on U.S. soil again. And, and, and you know, it was, uh, it was a very, very good first show on a leg. Sometimes the first couple shows, I mean, this is, I'm not giving away rock and roll secrets here, but sometimes the first couple shows on a, on a tour can be a little ropey as you're just kind of getting the chops together and figuring out how it all works and all that. But um, in Baltimore the other day, apart from the, um, the Kirk and Rob mishap, uh, it, it was pretty, uh, pretty rocking all the way through. So I felt really good about it. Yeah, and again, is it that three or four shows that it takes to get comfortable, not just for the band from a musical standpoint and the fact that, you know, you're a little out of sorts in that respect, but there is such a huge production that goes on with this exactly, thing. And yeah. then you try and change up the set some nights, which yeah. means the production people have got to be on their toes. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we change up the set list every night. I mean, that's been part of our MO for about uh, 13, 14 years. The, the, uh, back in the day, it, it sort of grew out of actually what you're saying. I started you know, you're on these really long runs and you're playing the same set list every night and you're just sort of like, we gotta shake it up a little mm -hmm. bit, if not for, for anybody else, just for our own sanity. And I went to the, um, the lighting guy and I said, the lighting director, I said, listen, uh, you know, well, I'm gonna put some different songs in there. He goes, just give me about three days to change the lighting cues. I go, this is what rock and roll has come to. You need a three day warning to change the, 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 the programming of the lighting. So since then, um, it's been a, 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 a personal pride of mine that um, Metallic hasn't played the same set list in about 14 years since uh, 2003. Uh, the bigger thing on, on a tour, uh, I mean, when in the stadiums, is just all the stuff, you know, the, the flames and the pyros and the screens and the content and the snake pits and the balloons and there's so much uh, sort of auxiliary stuff and you know, it just takes a couple of shows for all that to 
you know, go bang when it's supposed to go bang. And, you know, there was this crazy, you saw the show the other day in, in front of me, there was this, uh, on Moth into Flame, there's this crazy, uh, I don't even know what the hell it is. It's like just this fire, fire, fire. It's like, <laughs> it's just a flame that, <laughs> uh, that just goes back and forth in front of me. And I'm just sitting there. It's so distracting. It's like 300 degrees. And I'm just sitting there looking at this wall of flame, just going back and forth the whole fucking song. And it's like, okay, it, you know, it'll take a couple of shows to sort of just get used to stuff like that. Some of it can be a little like, whoa, you know. But um, when you're playing stadiums, obviously you got to have some shit that blows up and you got to have some, you know, some, some stuff like that. And it's part of, of, of the fun of it, you know. And um, so, but listen, all things considered, show one in Baltimore the other day went off uh, as great as you could hope for. And uh, it's Friday night in Philly now. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, round two, you know? I think one of the things that probably going to make this run really fun is the fact that the new music is so good and has been so well received by fans, by, you know, any of the reviews that I, and I don't look at a lot of that stuff, but anything I saw was incredibly positive. It's got to feel good to have so many songs on a new record that people have had months to learn now. So they, they have got to gel crazy, really well yeah, with the older I stuff. Mean, it's crazy. I, I've, uh, I was telling somebody earlier, I've uh, heard a phrase in the last six months that I've never heard before in my life ever in 35 years in a rock and roll band, which is, why didn't you play more new songs tonight? I, I mean, usually, you know, as you know more than anybody, it's like, why are you playing so many, why are you playing the whole new album? Play more old stuff, play more old stuff. I mean, that's kind of the mantra that you hear when you're a musician these days. And uh, on the back of this record, you know, we play four new songs, we play five new songs. There's a couple shows where we played six new songs, mm. half the record, and still people come up, come on, where's Spit Out the Bone? Where's That's, so -and -so? Yeah. Where's this? Play more new songs. It's like, dude, we're just getting started, <laughs> okay? We're six months into this dance, and we got lots of touring left, and um, we're just getting, like I said, our, our feet wet, and, and we still have, we've played, I think we've played seven of the 12 songs we got five to go, uh, and, you know, obviously what seems to be like a fan favorite, like Spit Out the Bone, and yeah. we'll get to all of it. Great song. I don't think introducing Spit Out the Bone in a stadium, it, you know, that's a pretty deep song. You got to, I think that may work better in a an arena or whatever. Uh, but listen, the fact that, um, that the fans have embraced this record at the level that they have, uh, the fact that people want to hear more, and the fact that... Um, we feel comfortable enough to go out and open a stadium show with new songs is kind of a testament to um, how awesome this record's been received. I mean, way beyond our wildest both hopes and imagination. So it's been um, it's been truly uh, truly kind of um, it, you know people are sitting there going, "This is your best record since the Black Album." Some people are saying it's the best record ever. I mean, hearing that stuff 35 years into career. It's kind of crazy because there's this thing, as you know, in the music business about the best days are behind us. Do you know what I mean? And when you still get a chance to, to challenge that, it's an awesome thing, especially when it happens as organically as this whole thing did. So we're, uh, we're very appreciative, and it's, uh, it's a really cool time in Metallica right now. You know, that's a really interesting point because you, you're – you guys, for many years now, have been in what I call rarefied air that not many artists have gotten to breathe before. And now I think that's even more acute because there are a lot of phenomenal rock bands that have been around for a long time that are phenomenal touring groups. But after a while, even when they've made new music, you know, sometimes it's okay, sometimes not so okay. You guys have delivered one of the best records of your career. Why do you suppose it worked out that way? Man, uh, I've been asked that question a lot in the last six months, yeah. and I, I don't, I mean, there's there's not one soundbite answer. There's a, a whole pile of factors. Uh, I think the great unsung hero uh, in this whole record and this endeavor has been Greg Fiddleman. He, he has been our, basically our, our you know, our, our sound guy, our engineer, our go-to guy for everything since Death Magnetic. And he's been, I think he's finally, tweaked our sound and figured out exactly what our MO is and, and, and how we function the best, both in terms of the studio and in terms of how we should sound and how he gets 
not only the performance but the the, the sounds and and the the, the sonics and all that mm. uh, so i think he has a lot he has a lot to answer for um and you know obviously these songs are maybe slightly less progressive a little more kind of groove oriented and maybe slightly more um cohesive in a way uh so that's probably a little part of it and you know you can never discount the without getting too sort of uh, crazy here i mean you can never discount the energies of the universe and how things are aligning and the right record at the right time if this record came out two or three years ago maybe it wouldn't have been received mm. do you know what i mean yeah. there's something about the the, the the sort of the musical landscape what everybody else is doing how your record correlates to what everybody else is doing and so on so it's it's a lot of these factors um and uh, of course our charm and our good looks no <laughs> but it's uh <laughs> charm no, and dashing uh i you know it's just it worked out i mean what the fuck it 35 years in you know some of it works out some of it doesn't work out we always do our best as you know and um you know this one we just nailed so it's uh it's, uh, it's, like I said, it's a good time. Well, if you need the current Metallica touring and album cycle in a nutshell, there it is. It's all you need to know. I'm Lou Brutus. That's Lars. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me once again. Always great Hi. to see you. Great to see you. Hard Drive Online is brought to you in part by Napa Auto Parts. Stop by your local Napa Auto Parts store and conquer the job and Napa know-how.